Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Hurdy Bird Broadcast Network. And we are talking to Danny Smith tonight, and we are on the Power Hour. If you have listened to a show somewhere on YouTube or Facebook feed, we ask you to come over and join us uh, or join the group, the Power Hour uh, Broadcast. Danny L. Smith, that's what you type in, search on Facebook. You'll find it. We'll add you. We check it every day and add new members every single day. Tonight we're talking about the 15 Invaluable Laws, John Maxwell's book, and Danny's going to talk about, I think, the subject is pain. Pain. All right, Danny. We are. We're going to talk about the law of pain. The law there is of a pain. Law. There is a law associated with pain. So, All right. so John's written, uh, I think, three law books. Uh, one being the uh, 21 invaluable laws of uh, irrefutable laws, the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, and this one, the 15 invaluable laws of growth, and he's written one on laws of teamwork. Don't remember the exact name. Tonight we're going to talk about the law of pain. <laughs> so uh, let's see. What was oh, we have a handout on the Facebook page. If you're listening to this live or if you're listening to it uh, on a, uh, via the podcast or the YouTube, you can go to the Facebook group and download the handout. So anything before I get started, Hurdy? Nope. Let's go, man. I'm excited. I want to talk about pain. Yeah. Now, John <laughs> says, good management of bad experiences leads to great growth. Now, remember... This is, out of his book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. This is chapter number eight, law number eight. He says, it's not that something went wrong. That's something that you've got to learn. The pain isn't about that something went wrong. Now, he really gets into this in the book, that we think pain happened because something went wrong. But, I mean, it's not always about, I mean, I know people have pain from something going right. So just, you've got to kind of, one of these things, you've got to ponder on statements people make sometimes. I love it when I'm in a room with people that are smarter than me, which is all the time, and I have to listen to what people say, especially when I disagree with them, but even when I do agree with them. And this book, or this chapter, this book, particularly this chapter, is full of those things I've had to go, huh? My original book that I, uh, that I first got in 2012 to go through a mastermind with a man named John Griffin, I've got notes in there, and I've got all kinds of question marks about this. So I did. I had to go through this chapter thinking, what is he talking about here? Not disagreeing, even not really agreeing with the author, just trying to ponder what he's talking about. Now, I've been through, uh, I don't know, 16, 17, 18 complete uh, masterminds around this book over the last five-plus years, and there's very little of it. I don't, uh, well, there's just so much of it that I have changed my, I don't have a question mark yet. I've crossed the question mark out in the book. So, so anyway, let's get started. Uh, every problem introduces a person to himself. John's got all kinds of stuff there. I'm just hitting highlights. Uh, truth about bad experiences. If you're following along, that space right there, if you're in the handout, truth about bad experiences. Everyone has them. They're not unique to anyone. If we expect a fair shake or a fair like, be ready for a big disappointment. You know, I had to look up the first time I read that fair like, what that means, and there's some cultures that that fair like, fair shake means the same thing. No one likes pain. You make bad experiences positive experiences. Got another book I'm reading right now by a guy named, last name is uh, Winko, Win, uh, Wilco, something like that. Uh, actually, I just read one of his books uh, uh, 
about leadership. He's a former Navy SEAL. I don't know if you're ever really a former Navy SEAL. But uh, the whole book and the discipline book, the name of the book is Discipline Equals Freedom. It's all about taking pain and turning it into positive experiences. But no one likes them. Few make bad experiences positive experiences. I already said that. Then, he, then here's, here's the big part of this chapter, the pain file. So buckle up here. I'm going to go through it so you can fill in the blanks, and we'll come back to each one of them a little bit. The pain of inexperience. So you've got the pain file folder, and here's the folders themselves. The pain of inexperience. The pain of incompetence. The pain of disappointment. Start off with pain of inexperience, incompetence, disappointment. The pain of conflict. The pain of change. The pain of bad health. The pain of hard decisions. Think about all these. Each one of these can be painful. They can hurt. But we don't want to waste the struggle. Different <laughs> subject, maybe. But the pain of financial loss. The pain of relationship losses. The pain of not being number one. The pain of traveling. That's an interesting one. The pain of responsibility. So we look at these. Hurry, let me ask you. Which one? Of those, however many, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, L, through L, uh, uh, how many, or, or, or which one? Well, the one that jumped out, the, me, the one that yeah. jumped out at me right away that I remember vividly is when I got laid off in 2008 and started the business. The pain of, of uh, inexperience and uh, was a big one for me. I had no clue what I was doing. None. It was painful. But you did it anyway. I'd Which part to. did you? Uh, 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 so you you got laid off and you um, you had no experience in what? Well, I had no experience on the business side. I knew how to do video. I knew how to do the internet stuff, but I had very little to none. I'd already been in a structured environment all my life. So being an entrepreneur and starting my own business was a real uh, painful challenge, to say the least. But I you did it anyway. I did it anyway. That's right. I worked through it. How come? Because I knew what I was doing was right, and I also knew that it was beyond. That it was bigger than what I was going through at the time and learning. And I liked the. And I actually ended up liking light bulbs and learning because it really made me feel um, fulfilled to learn through it. So it ended up being a good thing. So anything worth doing is worth doing poorly until you learn until to do it well. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What else? Which other one jumped out? Um, I would say, I, you know, there's a couple of them on there, but that one jumped out at me, and I'm trying to think about the uh, – maybe the – I don't know. Read number – what was number three? Number three was disappointment, the pain of disappointment. There you go. That was the other one. Man, how many times? How many times when you're running a business? At least for me, do you get all high when you think good things are getting ready to happen, and then all of a sudden everything falls apart? And I don't mean like it's forever. I mean it falls apart at that moment when you really needed something, and you just feel this tremendous amount of disappointment. And so then you get creative. Then you start figuring out how to be creative, and that's the juice that turns on for me. Is when it gets really tough, I get super creative. That took a while to develop that skill, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that, you know, all of these, that creativity is a, we're going to talk about that actually here in a minute, but all of it is a, uh, a way out of the pain is to, is to get creative. So we'll come to that in a minute. You know, one that I didn't get for a long time, even, what? What? Hold on a second. Well, good. All right. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay, six so that I think we'll we'll, we'll see. I'll um, add that. Just keep going. The, the the pain of traveling. Here's what I thought, and John doesn't say this quite like this in the books, but the pain of traveling. You know, the pain of traveling for me was had it was kind of an opposite effect. When I when I could travel pain goes away a lot of times because I'm not where I'm, you know, I don't have the pain of, and I get mixed up. Okay, should I go out and make sales calls or should I sit at my desk and do some admin work? You know, and, and, I, and I know he's supposed to block out time and do all this. Uh, it, 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 I don't flow real well through all of that. But the traveling, when I travel, I feel freedom, kind of like on weekends. Uh, now, I do take, you know, calls. I'm a mortgage loan officer, and I work when the realtors work. So they're working at night on the weekends. I'm working at night on the weekends. But still, the pain of travel. It says here in, uh, in the notes, if you got the handout, when I am away, I feel dot, dot, dot. You fill in the blank. Well, for me, I feel relieved normally. Normally, I feel relieved. There's some anxiousness. Uh, but... But it's still, it's, it's, it's anyway, uh, now I'm kind of cross-thinking some of that, my, my thoughts. What's good about going through this thing, especially when you've been through it you know, 15, 20 times before, you start having new thoughts about it. You know, the pain of uh, hard decisions, you can't please everyone. That was another one that with, you know, uh, I mean, you've refocused your, your business, right, Hurdy? Your video business versus, you know, some other things you've been doing. And, um, yep. you know, we talked earlier today, and you were pumped. Right. Uh, was you that a hard decision? Had, had, now, have you dropped some things, or you just you're not focusing on them? Mm, I, I, I'm not focused on them. And the reason is, is I was getting away from my niche, and I discovered it based on the, my feelings and gut feelings about it and seeing the results of trying to do too much. So I went back and cut out that other law in that book, The Law of Expansion, and I decided mm -hmm. to stick within my niche. And it made a there big difference in my attitude and how I felt about things because I'm really good at that niche. Good. That's very good. You know, I look at uh, the pain of conflict. John says human encounter doesn't always feel good. Sure doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, there is conflict. There's conflict in growth. Uh, there's conflict in moving to new ne new levels. There's conflict in uh, I've got to tell somebody this evening my made loan application today, and uh, we have some work to do. That's what I will be telling him. And uh, uh, you know, when I'm working with people, that's a process. I don't just typically give somebody a denial. I will also tell them, okay, can't do your loan right now, but here's what I can do. Here's what you can do over the next few weeks, months, or years, typically less than a year. And, and you, it, so trying to work through that. Some people don't want to hear it. Anyway, but the pain of conflict, that human encounter, for me, for years was, was difficult. I could even say that I probably moved from loan origination back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s into management, so I didn't have to t uh, give people bad information. We'd right. learn to do it inside of a corporate structure where I could, you know, you know hopefully hire the right people, train them, and bring them through the process. I mean, you know, I, did I have to let people go? I did. I'd say most of the time people knew they were getting ready to let go. We had already worked through some processes. So. Right. Uh, so, so what do you do about it? Uh, John says, so we started off with the pain file, went into, going into now what he calls the live it mode. It's your choice. It's your life. You choose. So how to turn your pain into gain. Choose a positive life stance. That right there, choose a positive life stance, might be 
I'd say likely is the most important statement in this whole 275-page book. Definitely the most important statement in this chapter, but likely the most important statement in the entire book. Choose a positive life stance. So if we were having a discussion, we'd start talking about what are your, your life assumptions and presuppositions about life, people, and experiences. Do you start with an expectation that people are good or bad? Do you start with an expectation that experiences can be dealt with or they could make your day or break your day? With a positive life stance, goodwill becomes better and bad will not be as bad. While life is not always the way we hope it, it will be, it is always the way it turns out. How will you view the final result? A positive life stance will find positive lessons in every experience. Man, I could throw out numerous Bible verses right there that I've learned over the years and how important that is. Right. Uh, this morning, before I decided what we are going to go through tonight, and... Uh, I was reading, I try to read it at least every, other, every Monday. I read my mission statement. Uh, it's more of a life, this particular thing is a life statement. I wrote it back in 1997, in November of 97. And it probably, it's, it, and it's, uh, and much of it is formulated around having a positive outlook on life the whole aspect of what I picked up somewhere uh, might have been from Zig Ziglar, you know, don't waste the struggles. Most of us, when we're in pain, we just want to get out of pain. I want to get out of pain too, but I also want to learn what, how did I get into the pain? Has this happened before? Have I been here before? What could I, why didn't I, Figure it out so I'm not here again. Um, so John says, get back to his notes, how to turn your pain into gain. One, choose a positive life stance. Two, or B, if you're following on the handout, embrace and develop your creativity. Now this is, this is where we have to quit being so logical. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it before that the yep. older you get, the more logical you become and the, and, and the less creative you become. They've right. proven it with neuroscience and the brain. Brain activity on, on that logical part of your mind that increases, the part of your brain that thinks creatively decreases. But it's not a genetic thing like gray hair and wrinkles. It's something you can change. You have to develop your creativity. Uh, C, or three, three C, uh, uh, embrace the value of bad experiences. D, make good changes after learning from bad experiences. Uh, he says this is especially true if the bad experience is a result of bad ju judgment. As fire hardens steel into a usable tool, so too can pain shape us into an amazing person for the future. Feelings such as resentment can make a bad experience even worse. I don't think you were there Friday at no, CBLG. Uh, those of you on the phone, uh, CBLG is Christian Business Leaders Group. It's a networking group that's almost seven years old. It'll be seven years old the second week of January. Met every Friday except for holidays for almost seven years now. We were talking about uh, we're talking about our calling, and we uh, got into part the uh, part part of the discussion was about success versus significance, and that how much success is a feeling, and s significance is more substance, but our our feelings that we get from pain 
can cause us, it can cause resentment. And it just ends up making that bad experience even worse. Uh, E, take responsibility for your life. Are you a victim or a victor? In John's book, Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn, he takes this point real deep in in one whole chapter. It's a chapter about hope. And he actually gives a little bit of a, he's got a, 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 almost kind of like a, a quiz, but uh, it but it it says I remember one part of it says that if you don't if you consider yourself a victim if you have victim thinking it's because you've lost hope. Now I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. You take responsibility for your life. Are you a victim or victor? He says it is only one short step from why me to woe is me. Hmm. goes on, it seems very hard, maybe even cruel and callous, but no matter what happens, our attitude towards a negative experience will help us on a chosen path. What he's saying here is that our attitude chooses our path. When we have a bad attitude, that's the path we're choosing through and, and out of that pain. Yep. I personally think it's going to be a lot longer journey than a good attitude. We have a great attitude as we go through the process. So that's a quick, what, uh, longer than expected, about 23 minutes or so, a little over 20 minutes. Overview of that chapter on the law of pain. Comments? Pick up the book. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you know, uh, one of my little uh, tricks, and I don't want to discount when we go through things, but one of the things I do in my head is I look around when I'm going through stuff and I say, you know, I'm not the only one. Um, I'm not isolated on an island. This happens to a lot of people besides me. And believe it or not, I'll still be kicking and breathing in the next week, and it will work out if I keep my attitude up and be creative, work through it, and be calm, and just figure out the next steps. It's amazing what that kind of take plan can can change your attitude instead of going down the other road, where woe is me, it's all my fault, I'm stupid, what an idiot. That just gets you stuck in the ditch, you know? you got to work through it. got to. Yeah. You know, I've, there's a, uh, I receive a monthly uh, letter uh, from a man named John Eldridge. It's his letter that he sends out every month. Uh, he's with Ransom Heart Ministries, and he's the author of the book, um, Journey of Desire. And then, let's see, what was his next book? Uh, Journey of Desire, I've read Journey of Desire, I've read Wild at Heart, um, a few other of his books, most recent, Moving Mountains. But, this letter a couple months ago, three months ago, I got, and it lays on my kitchen table uh, because I want to, uh, as a reminder, uh, every morning when I do sit down at the breakfast table, I see that. And in the letter, he was telling about a friend of his who was actually trying to buy, been trying to buy a house. And I can only assume that the man had had a lot of financial problems over the years and maybe... Uh, income problems, but he was about to get a house, and then there was a hiccup. And three months later, he found out, yep, you get in the house. And he told John, this is a very interesting statement. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and John felt it was interesting enough to put it in this letter uh, to his uh, email uh, or, 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 or to his mailing list that the guy said, You know, John, if I'd known it was going to turn out like this and everything was going to be okay, I'd have lived the last three months much differently. I wouldn't have worried so much. wouldn't have had near as much strife. Yep. A couple of things like it. And John said it just hit him. And we all have that problem, I think. I don't mean to put us all in a bucket, but I know I have that problem. I get all... You know, worried about stuff. You know, uh, you know. It just what the deal is. 
what's the end result? I mean, where is it going to lead? And, you know, that, and how do you lead through that? I mean, you think about, you know, you know, the guy that just kept on living his life and not been concerned about it, done the best he can. I know I've seen you do that. You've seen me do that. We yep. just plow on. I was yep. speaking to a group of guys a few years ago, and I was talking about living one day at a time. Afterwards, this guy came up and said, Danny, the problem with one day at a time is just too long. And uh, he said, I just can't. I've got to live, you know, just one moment at a time. Wow. That's, that's actually a great attitude. Soon after that, I went to hear a man named Doug Sherman, who wrote the book, uh, Your Work Matters to God. He wrote another book about 25 years later, More Than Extraordinary, or More Than Ordinary. And his and and I listened to him speak, and he said, "Is just walking one step at a time, putting one foot in front of another." And he demonstrated that walking across the stage. And I think this, and for and uh, I get really, you know, kind of twisted up a little bit in the goals and growth thing. I'm much more of a growth person than a goal. Uh, not that I dislike goals per se. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, sometimes they're too quickly set. We're, we're too busy setting goals and not focusing on achieving goals. I've actually got a post about that on LinkedIn. But we have to live through the pain and, and not waste that struggle. Anybody listen to this, I'm sure you can't hurt it. Anybody listen to it, you can kind of determine which part's me, my thinking, versus John in the overview of the book. But it's a right. great book, the 21 – I'm sorry, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. That's all I got tonight. Well, Danny, thank you. Great insight. Got me pumped up, and, and, I, and I will tell you that we appreciate everybody that's listening in, not only on the live, but on the uh, on demand, and that's great information. And, and I highly recommend you go buy this book, John Maxwell. Danny, what's the title again? The Invaluable, the Laws. Invaluable Laws of Growth. And, right. uh uh, let me say also, if you're listening to this in, uh, in December 2017 into January of 18, pay attention. We are going to start another um, mentorship group. Yay. Uh, it'll be around 12 to 15 people. Uh, don't Yay. charge for these. Uh, just something where I uh, put, put into play. Uh, some things, and we're actually some of the books we've been talking about on the, where we're up to now, number 22 of these yep. uh, recordings, podcasts. We're going to put in place some of this. We're going to be working through um, and starting a weekly, even a couple times a week call and check-in. It's going to be a group mentorship that I'll be leading, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be leading it, uh, but I'm also going to be uh, learning from it. A uh, little bit different format than what we've done in the past. We did not have one of these in 2017, but picking it back up. 